Howdy folks, I'm just down here at the warehouse getting ready to put in a long day. Today's video is geared towards those who want to learn about evaluating and inspecting costume jewelry particularly. We just put out a video recently on fine jewelry. It's a very good step-by-step -step guide, very involved, so you should check that out as well. I'm going to put the link right here. Without further ado, Let's get into this, but first I'm going to take you on a short little skip through a local thrift store to show you exactly what it looks like as I'm trying to find that jewelry, and then we'll get right into it. Let's go find some treasures. Now what I have for you guys and ladies is a bunch of brooches, costume brooches. And I just wanted to kind of take some of these. These are all things I've purchased locally um, and uh, for resale. And I wanted to show you kind of my process and kind of what I'm thinking as I see a thing. And to determine whether or not this has any value at all and what kind of value and, and what I'm going to do with it. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time, but I want to go through several of these and kind of show you, um, you know, what we're looking at. Some of these are going to have markings on them. Some of them are not. And I'll kind of go through that real fast. So let's start off with this one. Initially, my thinking is, okay, this is pretty visually attractive. Uh, it's interesting. It's got a lot going on. I love the deep, rich blue colors. And you got this kind of Aurora Borealis kind of looking iridescent, um, these kind of stones are round. So I flip it over. First thing I notice is that they're open on the back. So it's allowing light to, to go through this. I can tell by the look of these that they are plastic, but if you find a piece of jewelry where you believe that they are not plastic, if it's open in the back, that's a, typically a decent indication that that stone is of higher quality or is actually a stone and is not synthetic plastic or um, glass, right? So what I notice here is uh, it looks like the overall construction is pretty good. It's fairly heavy. This is a nice piece. I, what I do not see is a manufacturer's name, and I don't see any indication of any precious metal. In fact, I don't know if any of these have precious metals except a couple of them, I believe, are gold-filled. But anyhow, that's going to be a nicer piece. I'll probably sell that individually. Okay, the next piece, and you can see what I did immediately. I basically turned it over. Again, fairly nice color, three-dimensional uh, in kind of a cool way. Again, uh, you're seeing that several of these pieces um, have open backs. So it's allowing light to come through them. Uh, what uh, It also looks like um, these particular um, stones have kind of this uh, silvery color on the bottom of them. Hmm, that's odd. It shouldn't, shouldn't it look blue on the back like it does on the front? Well, one technique that uh, costume jewelry companies in, incorporate and use sometimes is to either, before they glue a piece into place, they will paint the underside of the metal with a particular color, or they will actually paint the back of these stones, which in this case, this is what they've done. They've painted them a silvery color. And what that does is it, when light goes in, it reflects back out and it is going to give you a manufactured look, a manufactured color. They're trying to make these pieces look more valuable and more brilliant than they actually are in real life. If the light were to go through them, they would be much paler and or even clear. So uh, still a decent little piece. It's put together fairly well. Uh, but you can tell that these are not full, you know, actual stones. They are prong set. They're not glued in. Ones that are glued in uh, are typically less valuable. If you think about it, would you want to just rely on glue to hold your diamond or your precious gemstone in there? No, you wouldn't. You'd want prongs or you'd want some sort of set and hold it in so that it doesn't fall out. These have little settings, but these settings are very superficial. I could pry it up with my fingernail if I wanted to. Things that are uh, pieces that are made of silver or gold that have nice quality gemstones in them are going to have significant and strong durable um, ways of holding those gems in place. All right, this piece, multiple colors. You got things that almost look kind of like moonstones. They they kind of uh, they kind of glimmer in the in the in the light. These little pieces here that look like pearls or faux pearls. I'm going to flip it over. What do I see? Well, you can see it's a pin. If you look down in here, 
there's something that says A-R-T, art or art craft. Uh, so this does have a maker's name in it. And so it's going to be easier to look for comps, com uh, um, the other sales of uh, similar items so that you know how to price it. Um, I usually sell pieces that have uh, maker's marks or manufacturer names on them by themselves because they typically will sell easier and faster. Okay, so this piece doesn't look terribly valuable at first look, and the reason is these stones look very fake. Uh, they look like they're probably clear stones. They probably used a glue that's sort of like a has yellowed over time, and that's bleeding through. Also, this stone... Uh, here in the middle is just not terribly attractive. It's got that dark hue to it. It almost kind of has a gray look. So it's not the most beautiful look. Now, the weight of it, though, feels good in my hand. Let's flip it over. So we got this pin. We got a nice, uh, you know, slick kind of metal back here where they've made it. And then on this side, I see a name of some kind right here and i'm trying to see if i can tell okay yes so it says sarah cov sarah cove or sarah coventry so that is uh the name of a costume jewelry brand uh the things sell it's not one of the higher end ones uh and i can find them pretty commonly out there next up we've got this piece right here um Pretty little uh, colors like that again that kind of uh, iridescent pink color uh, It's clearly a flower. You got the pen. It's sort of curvature got some weight to it I flip it over and I can see under the middle here this little uh, You know makers mark right here. And I don't know if you can tell but it says C-O-R-O Coro Coro is actually a pretty good designer. They uh, their self sells pretty well um, I don't like the way that they do uh, a lot of times the way that they do their uh, names on here. A lot of uh, jewelry is stamped, so once the metal is in place, they'll take a piece of metal, and, and on the very bottom of it, it has their maker mark, and they'll take maybe a hammer or something, they'll tap, and they'll they'll put that mark in there. So on the piece of jewelry itself, it's concave, meaning it goes into the metal. In this case, I don't. they had some sort of a form, uh, like a rubber mold or something that they poured the metal into to make the the metal piece and they already had the it looks like they already had the name imprinted in that so when it came in uh the metal just filled in and when they do these injections the metal doesn't fill in perfectly sometimes and a lot of times these are very faint very difficult to see on the coro brand sometimes because it's convex it's popping up out at you three-dimensionally so anyways but still good all of the stones are intact you want to uh, keep a lookout are all the stones there they are if uh, if you're missing stones uh, sometimes you can find cheaper pieces and find similar colored stones glue those in I like to use just a clear fingernail polish to replace those that usually does really nicely all right, here we have a piece that's gold tone, kind of interesting three-dimensional look. You've got several moving parts here popping out at me. If I flip it over, over again, you've got this same sort of look as this one over here that we did earlier. Do you see that? It may be the same manufacturer. It's this particular type of design where they've, these are almost like circular hinges a little bit, but they're almost actually, they're more like rivets. It's like they put these little rivets in uh, and they probably had a little tool that they could snap, like a hand tool that they could put those in with. Um, not a bad look, but it didn't have a maker's mark or anything like that on it. Here we have a piece that looks like it has a very large pearl, but you can see down in here this kind of gummy, yellowy gum. That's not a good indication. It's kind of sloppy. It's pretty easy to see if you just turn it to the side, which makes me at first think probably not terribly valuable. I also noticed that all these little stones are glued into place. Again, means they're probably not very valuable. This one right here is missing one. When I flip it over, very kind of ugly, kind of textured, kind of ribbed, but no maker's mark. The all these, the all of that is just sort of the telltale sign that this is not. There wasn't a lot of effort put into this. Uh, probably cheaply made, uh, so it's not terribly valuable. Here we have one. Now this one, beautiful. Look at this vibrant color, the yellows, the blues, the reds, and the greens. You got all these different colors and uh, really a cool look. The, it, the way that it's made, the pen itself is hidden pretty well back behind there, so that doesn't even take away from the overall look of it. Very smart design. You got, it's symmetrical. I like it. I, my guess is it's going to be a decent piece. So if I pull it over, now there's no open back, so these are probably pieces of glass 
right? Based on the weight, it's probably glass. But you got this little rivet hinge area here. But then if I if I inspect closer, I'll notice that there's a name here, W-E-I-S-S Weiss, or maybe it's pronounced Weiss, I don't know. Uh, that is a very good brand. They command pretty good prices. Old vintage and rare pieces of Weiss jewelry uh, can sell into the hundreds of dollars. So be aware of that brand name. Another beautiful piece. Look at the vibrant colors. It's like a deep, almost looks like Colombian emeralds. And then you have this kind of moonstone-ish with the green on the inside and then these light accent pieces of green around it. I like that. Flip it over, good sign. They've opened it up so light can come through. They're relying on the actual color of the stones or uh, the way that they made those plastics to, to bring the color to you. If as I, I, I look around, what I don't see is a maker's name, which is unfortunate, but I can tell by the weight of it, the look of it, and just the general appeal that this is a high quality piece. And something like this will probably sell in the, you know, 30 to 40 or 50 dollar range would be my guess, even though it doesn't have a maker's mark on it. A couple more pieces I'm going to pop up real fast. This, eh, it's okay. The metal itself almost seems like it might be made of silver. I'm always going to check that. This top piece here has prongs on it. That's a good sign. I don't love the yellowish color of those, although as a contrast for the piece, it could fit okay. Again, we got this rivet here in the middle, and I'm sure that this is indicative of a certain time period of um, that being uh, these being made. That, in this case, is made so that you could actually spin this into different positions, right? Depending on how you wanted that to be affixed to your garment. No maker's name or mark on it, no indication of silver. So, you know, kind of a lower quality piece, but it does have all the stones intact at least. Here's another visually stunning piece. Beautiful green. Sad news is it's missing this little stone. So what I might do is if I ever come across some broken pieces of costume jewelry, don't just pitch it. Keep some of those in a bag so you can harvest some of their stones to replace in nicer pieces. That's just a little tip. I like the green color. Let's flip it over here. I like the weight of it. Um, the way that the metal is made uh, could be better. Um, I don't see any maker's names or marks on it. And just kind of the look of this, you can't quite tell, but this has clearly been plated with a different type of metal in order to give it this yellowy glimmer because it's sort of starting to puff up a little bit. If you've ever seen old paint on a wall, before it starts flaking off, it actually starts to bubble up and, and kind of detach from the wall. And that's kind of what's happening on this piece. It's kind of rubbing off. Lower quality pieces will do that. So it does have some things going for it, the look of it in general and the color, but we would need to replace that stone before we would sell it. Here's another nice piece. Some really good colored silver pieces, but I, I noticed one thing off the bat, and that is that these pieces right here, these two stones on the end, if you look at their, the mirror images, these, these almost look black, really dark. So one of two things has happened. Either this is a very low quality piece, or these stones have been replaced at some point and they didn't find ones that matched real well. If I flip it over, you're going to see what I talked about a moment ago. Do you see this right here? It's kind of detaching. It's kind of puffing up. This is either a poor mold, a poor injection, or that's a, a, a plating of metal that's starting to pop up off of there. If I look closer on here, we're going to see right here, you see some sort of a mark. And that says made in Austria. So this is European Austrian made piece, probably fairly old, 50s or 60s. Um, but the, the thing with this is it's a little bit unattractive because of those dark pieces. I'd probably put that in a lot rather than selling it by itself. Next piece, I like the look of this one. Nothing's dark. We got some bright blues and greens and just a little bit of accent of this, uh, you know, these pieces that glimmer. I like the weight of it. Let's flip it over. Okay, kind of rough on the back, not real high quality metal. Um, you can see it's definitely uh, not necessarily rusting, but you've got a lot of edge wear here. In here, you can see right here, it has a word and it says Austria. Again, so this is another piece that was made in Europe. Again, probably in the 1960s to early 70s, I would guess. Um, these are synthetic pieces. They're made of plastic or some sort of a resin, like a lucite or something like that. But it's a unique piece. I think it probably would still sell all right. Because again, if you're putting them on your garment, you're not looking at the back of it. Okay, 
this piece right here, it's a snowflake with a fake pearl on there. If I turn to the side, I can see the glue, pretty apparent. Um, it looks like, yeah, all the, all the stones are there. That's good. Little hearts. Not terribly unattractive, but it just kind of looks boring. You know, it's kind of blah. I flip it over, and what I see is this kind of edgy texture. A lot of these cheaper quality things will actually put a lot of detail into the texture of the back in order to try to trick you into thinking that it's valuable. Uh, don't worry about uh, this kind of thing. This doesn't make it any, any more valuable. Uh, it's just the way that they made the metal piece in the, in the mold. Uh, not real valuable, anyway. Okay, this is a beautiful piece. I like this piece a lot. Uh, I like how bright the centerpiece is. I like the flow of it. It's got a, kind of a kinetic energy to it, this light lime green here in the stone. And then you got the stem coming down, a beautiful flower. If I flip it over, we got those little, that little rivet. I like that it's open back so the light can pass through it. I also noticed that this design is not one single piece. If you, uh, if you know much about the construction of jewelry, you can see this piece right here had originally been stuck through like wire. It was put up through here and into here, and then they took solder, and they soldered that to this piece, and they soldered it right here as well. So these were two pieces originally, and they put them together to make this. I think they did a beautiful job on it. I'm not seeing a manufacturer's name or make, but this would definitely be a piece I would not hesitate in selling by itself. Moving on, we just got a few more here. I'm glad you're still with me, still learning, hopefully. Beautiful little colors here. This is a pendant. This is not a brooch. It's a pendant. But we got some really beautiful pinks. All the white stones are intact. Not terribly heavy. Probably not super valuable. Uh, but we look on the back. They have the holes open. So these are all probably either glass or cubic zirconia, something like that. These may actually be uh, lab-created rubies. Uh, or, or uh, you know, pink sapphire, something like that. Uh, but they could also be glass. I don't see any indication of silver content. So it's still a decent piece. I'd probably wait until I could find a decent silver colored chain and sell it as a necklace as opposed to selling it just as that pendant. All right, I like the, the look of this design. It's, it's uh, you know, I would say it's terribly rare, but it's also not super common. It's kind of like a leaf design. You've got multiple uh, sizes and shapes. You got squares, you got ovals, you got circles and tiny ones, and then you even got these little ones come down here. Now, the bad news on this piece is that it is missing a, I don't know, I guess it isn't. Well, it looked, at first glance, it looked like it was missing a stone, but it's not. They're all there. I was gonna say, if it was missing one of these little rectangular ones, that would be very difficult to find one to replace. If I flip it over, really slick metal, I'm not seeing any terrible wear, but I'm also not seeing the name of a maker on here. But because of the look of it, uh, and it's a decent size, I would sell that one by itself. Okay, now this is a really cool look. Very unique. I don't even actually know what direction it's supposed to be uh, uh, put at, but maybe like that. It's nice. You've got these sort of like a peridot color, very, very light green, and some of these other accent colors of varying shades. I like that. Again, nice little back here. Slick, although it's a little puffy here. Generally speaking, we got a nice piece. I would sell that individually. Okay, gorgeous piece. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous. Emerald green, I love the, the shape of the, of the stones here. Uh, we got, again, we got a symmetrical piece somewhat, but then the little asymmetrical here at the top. The pin goes through the middle. We got some light colored stones. It's got some good weight to it. The back is nice and slick. Um, nope, no manufacturer as far as I can see. Still very, very nice piece. That's probably a 30 or $40 brooch right there. Okay, now this is also lovely. Uh, it's just slick. I like the design, the filigree, the etch work. It is not missing a single stone, and it has several stones. I like the look of this little piece of metal down here at the bottom. To me, that indicates it's probably going to be fairly high quality. Uh, again, very slick. And if you look real closely, now it's faint. It's just barely etched in there. Very, very uh, light. If I pull it up here, you're going to see it says the word pinning, pinning. 
So penning uh, brooches, you look them up, they sell in, in, in really high for costume jewelry. I'm talking, uh, you know, into the hundreds of dollars for single brooches. And this is a good size. We're talking something that's probably two and a half to three inches long. Definitely sell that on its own. These last couple we've got here, I left these together to, to kind of show you. These are both more vintage pieces, and I can tell by the color of these that they look to me to be like they are gold-plated. Uh, I like the look of both of them. They're different, but I love the bright colors of the stones in them. Flip them over. I don't see anything on this, but man, just look at that design. This is a very sort of like an Art Nouveau-ish uh, design. Beautiful. I'm not seeing any indication of metal purity on here, but I'm pretty confident that that is made, has got some gold content in it. And then this one, though, right here, you can see it has like an H, and then it says mm, 1 20th 12 karat GF gold filled. I hope that this helps, folks. This is what it'll be like if you get a bag or a box of costume jewelry, or if you're just going through, maybe some stuff gets sent to you from ancestors, or maybe someone passes away, or you inherit something, or maybe you've got a friend who's like, hey, can you help me identify this stuff? Now you know exactly what to look for. Well, there you have it. I hope some of those tips will help you out, and if you haven't done it yet, or haven't seen it, head on over to our channel and look for that video on the fine jewelry inspection. And also don't forget to check out our playlist all about uh, buying, selling, and collecting and identifying jewelry. Take care, folks. Be -do -bo -bo -bo. Let's go make some money. Rusty, rusty, rusty hair.